Hey, New Horizon Disciple Makers, it's Pastor Mark, and you're receiving this video along with all the other disciple makers in our Disciple Shift groups. So I want to thank you so much for jumping on here and offering your heart and offering your time and thinking it through and choosing a place and, and helping us to work out the promo and such. My prayer is that you will just thoroughly enjoy these groups, that they'll just fit you, stretch you, you'll meet people, pour in people, make disciple makers out of those people. I believe God has his hand on this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. Now, those things begin next week, September 10th. And so I want to kind of coach us here a little bit, and I want to do this in, in weeks to come as well. Get us all on the same page so we're all pulling the oars in the same direction. I want to just reiterate, I trust every one of you with any soul that I put in your group. I trust you to make disciples out of them. And so I don't have an issue with that. But we're looking to follow a process here that will put us all all on the same page. As you know, I'm speaking this Disciple Shift message series, and then we get to talk about it in our groups. And the idea is to preach it, to broadcast it, to go and chew on it, to dream on it, for people to think and let the Holy Spirit truly make impressions in our souls that we would do a Disciple Shift. Get back into groups, get back into growing big faith, get back to disciple making at New Horizon. I need you to, I need you to be a part of this. I mean, put your shoulder to this plow and would you plow with me, please? Now, as we get ready for our groups, we gotta have people in those groups. So I'm banging the drum, I'm sending videos, I'm inviting, I'm announcing from the front. I'll do that till I'm blue in the face. But I'm telling you, here's my analogy. I cannot blow smoke into your bottle. You're gonna have to draw the smoke in. That means you're going to have to work your circles and recruit and recruit to your group and do that with some real joy and a real invitational spirit. Think about the people in your circles and challenge them to be in your group. And you know what? I think there are probably people say, well, I'm already in a group. You say, great, be blessed in your group and go on to the next. Would you please do that? And by the way, I'm thinking, and this is very interesting, you're going to hear a lot of stuff this fall as I move through the Disciple Shift series, things that I've studied, things that I've worked with other other disciple makers in our community and beyond. And do you know what? We used to say, oh, 12, 15 people or whatever. Well, that's a pretty big group. Discipleship happens in smaller groups, even four, five, six people. Those seem to be the optimal so we can have real conversation and truly, truly make disciples. We're rabbis, and the disciples walk in the dust of their rabbis. So that kind of personal face-to-face -face time is how we want to develop groups. Now, if your group is bigger, I'm not down on you for that. Not at all. But... I don't want you to think that we can't do that with just a few people in our group. That's the big deal. So in terms of recruitment, check this out. The Church Center app. We've been talking about this, and we want you to download that in general for our use at New Horizon because there's tons of uses. But the group's functionality is just absolutely superb. So if you haven't downloaded that yet to your smart device, please do that. I left the links for the, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store in the description here. You can click on that, download, get yourself an account, and jump in. But here's what I want to show you. When you get to our homepage, down in the bottom right-hand corner, you're going to find Groups. It's a dedicated groups button, and you push that button, and guess what? You see all our groups. There they all are. Uh, there they all are, and you can you can thumb through them and and uh, read through them. That kind of you're going to find your own group. When you go to your own group, I want you to consider punching the button that says members. And when you do that, you'll see people that have signed up. You can communicate with them. And that's all a very, very awesome thing. But here's what you can do too. You can invite from this. So if you'll look down at the bottom, you will see this little button that says invite. At the top, you see the little send button as well. And if you'll click on that, what it will give you is a QR code. That's directly for your group. How cool is that? So if you meet somebody in the hallway and you've got your device, you show them your QR code, they take a picture of that, and they're in your group. How cool is that? But you can also, on that page, if you click the, the send, then you get to share that via email or a text message or a messenger, whatever you'd like to do, and they get a link that they can tap on their smartphone phone and learn about it and join your group. 
Now, how cool is that? And that, that device is also very helpful because you'll be able to communicate with your group members any schedule changes or prayer requests or, or special information you can send out and they can receive it that way. I'm just loving this thing. Now, let me go a little further with that because I'm going to be providing resources on a weekly basis. Well, there's a resource tab on your Church Center app and you click that and you're gonna see my PDF. And you can send that to a printer or to an email or whatever if you'd like to print, but you've always got that on your phone. You can be looking at it, you can be thinking about it. And I just think that's the coolest thing ever. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the resource right now. Now this little resource, little half sheet thing that I'm gonna build, here's the idea, friends. I am not intending for you to get all the way through that resource. Uh, what I'm suggesting is this is not a point by point question and answer kind of thing. For, for you to use in your group. This is simply an outline for you to internalize and for you to group uh, use as you draw your group into conversation, engage them in the subject matter. That's what it's all about. Our group, our, I'm sorry, yes, our discipleship group, um, our emphasis here and our goal here is not to teach about discipleship. It's not to teach. It is to engage people in the conversation and let the Holy Spirit impress upon their hearts a desire to grow as a disciple, for them to see themselves in a disciple-maker role and influencing other people, drawing people into conversation around discipleship. That's the idea. So it's not us talking. And this is, in, this is particularly difficult for those among us who are teachers. I'm one. I preach, I teach, I like to do that. And I'm pretty sure that people will somehow uh, apprehend and appropriate as I teach. I'm asking us to refrain from that, to learn this knack of drawing people into conversation and letting them express themselves and letting the Holy Spirit move in their hearts around these topics. So I'm going to challenge us that we step into it in that way. Now, I have two reminders for you as we get our heads around that form of group. One is, I have not called you group leaders, except by mistake. You were disciple makers. I selected you, not simply because you've led a group before, or, you know, you can gather some people, you know people, you can organize a group and make popcorn. That's not why I chose you. I chose you because I respect your walk in the Lord and I want what you've got to rub off on others. I want you to take what you've got and inject that into others. I want you to take the task of making disciple makers, not just disciples, but reproducing yourself so that they might go and reproduce. See, that's the deal. Making disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. We are disciple makers. That's who you and I are. So the resources that I offer and these groups that I'm asking you to serve, you're there not to lead the group, but to make disciples within that group, to help people move in the direction of discipleship. So that's one point I want to bring to you, your disciple makers. I want you to own that. I want you to wear it. I want you to live into that. And then secondly is this, that we're leaning into the Holy Spirit in these disciple shift small groups, leaning into the Holy Spirit. Here's a major tenet for you. You're going to hear this come forward. You're going to see it in the materials that we're going to be using. And that's this, that the Holy Spirit is the chief disciple maker. Here's what I mean by that. How do we come to Christ? The Spirit draws us. Didn't Jesus say that? Unless the Spirit draws us, we can't come to the Father. He opens our hearts. He opens our minds to see who God is. He's revealing God to us. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, faith comes by the Holy Spirit. And so we place our faith in Christ, this gift of faith by the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus says the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he'll remind you of everything that I've taught you and he will lead you in all truth. So it's the Holy Spirit who makes disciples and then he strengthens us to walk that out. So we want to engage and, and truly, truly invoke the, the, the Holy Spirit here and lean into the Holy Spirit in these disciple shift groups. See, that's the deal. We want to move from the head down into the heart and out to the hands. 
This is the work of the Holy Spirit. I can't do that simply by teaching people. The Holy Spirit does that as he's forming our hearts and forming our minds. And we're working to facilitate that kind of thing in our disciple shift groups. So we're going to use a simple, very simple model. And you've heard of this. Perhaps you've, you've been using this in our NT365 groups and such. But listen, here's the deal. Here's the deal, friends. We're engaging. I'm asking you to engage, asking you to engage in these three ways, head, heart, and hands. And I want to show you right now how this works. Very simple kind of template that I think we can all use, and it's reproducible because we're trying to make disciple makers. I can't make people into teachers if that's not their teaching gift, or pastors if that's not their gift. But we're all gifted and able to make disciples in our homes and wherever we may go. And so for us to pass these things on, this process along, man, we are making disciple makers, head, heart, and hands this thing, would you please? Let me offer you just a little bit of a caveat here, and I want us to be careful with this. Oftentimes when we gather with a group, what's the first thing we do? Hey, how's your week been going? And we go from circle to circle. Well, we went to the Ozarks. Well, my, you know, my, my friend got sick. Well, you know, I, I'm looking for a new job right now. You go all right. And then you say, well, what are your prayer requests? Well, I'd really like prayer for my coworker and for this person and for that. Guess what? You've just eaten up 45 or 50 minutes of your small group time. That's what you've done. Now, I'm not against those kinds of things, but I want to challenge you in this. I believe if we will head, heart, and hands our material, that stuff will emerge from it. Here's what I mean. You're talking along and someone says, you know, that reminds me of this past weekend when we went to the Ozarks. And all of a sudden, do you hear that? It kind of, it kind of comes out. Or I, you know, yeah, that, that really speaks to me because I'm praying for my friend here. Now, there may be a moment you need to stop everything and you need to pray for that, that grandchild that has just been diagnosed with something god-awful. But you're letting that emerge as the Holy Spirit is working in your midst. So let me run through these three, head, heart, and hands very quickly. Check this out. Head. Here's what we do is we're considering the message that I offered, and I'll give you the resources for the points, the major points, the, you know, the scriptures that I used, etc. What strikes you? So what strikes you in Pastor, Pastor's Mark message? message? What, 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 what scriptures strike you? What what points did Pastor Mark make that strike you? In the conversation in your group, what is striking you in all of this? And so we're kind of in the head here. Everybody's feeling safe now. Okay, I, I have this thought. Well, I thought that he said a funny thing. Well, here's something I'd never heard in the scripture. I've never thought about it that way. Do you see where we are? We're cerebral here. And we're not teaching, we're just reflecting on what was said and that kind of thing. So what's, what's occurring to you? What's striking your mind in this? Now let's move down a little bit. Well, what do you think God might be speaking to our hearts? What might God be saying to us? Now see, that's, that's, that's not a hocus pocus thing. If we, if we, you know, we don't want to make that too weird. Like what is the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart? Well, I don't even know how to hear the Holy Spirit. How would I know that? To phrase this in such a way, what do you think? What, what do you think God might be trying to tell us through the message, through the scriptures, through a conversation here? What's God, what's God perhaps speaking to New Horizon? Because I want this to be a congregation-wide thrust initiative into our future. What do you think God's saying to our, to our congregation? See, I feel like this is a way of helping people to recognize the nuances in their soul as perhaps coming from the Holy Spirit. Spirit. So, what about that? And then it draws us together around our church. What might God be speaking to our group? Here's one. Well, what might God be speaking to you personally? And see, we've kind of just gone a little deeper and a little deeper from the head down into the heart. We're getting to know each other here. And I might just say, well, I guess God is kind of telling me this. Wow, that's a cool thing. Do you see what has happened there? We've been, we've been training someone to hear from the Holy Spirit to be, be able to apprehend and appropriate for themselves. We're building a disciple, and the Holy Spirit is having their way. And then how about this one, the hands? What do you think God might be asking us to do with this stuff? That's just such a general question. As a church, as our group, again, as, as individuals here, what do you think God might be asking us to do with our hands? I mean, if, really, do. And we might even say, how can we help one another with that? See, this is an all-in. We might all get together and see, yeah, 
can see that God wants New Horizon to be this disciple-making church. I want this group, this is the perfect environment for this. And here's what God's calling of me. I recognize this in my life, and I'm going to step into this, and I'm asking you guys to pray for me as I do that. So that's what I've got for you today, just a way to organize your thinking about leading your groups. Now, as we move on and beginning this coming Sunday, I've set up a page on our website that will be podcasts. That is the audio only of my message, and you can get to it quickly, but let me give you another one. I'm going to drop that in the resource tab, and I'll let everybody in your group have that. So anybody that's got that Church Central app can go to your group, go to resources, and listen to the message, and all they can listen to the message on the way to the group. Boom. And they are prepared for the group. I'd rather you didn't. I would like you to process that a little bit so you can lead this thing. But I think that will make it really, really accessible for, for, uh, for folk. I'm going to leave it there that week. I'm so proud of you. I'm so thankful for you stepping in and doing this. Please let me know how I can help personally, what we can do to make this thing better. I will be drawing us together around making a, a process that we will use for others in the future. So let's take uh, next steps together. Stay in touch as we do. And friends, let me just pray over you now. Father, I thank you for these disciple makers for the calling upon their lives to reproduce what has been reproduced in them. I pray in these groups, God, where we want to teach, where we want to talk, where we're scared to death that people won't talk. God, give us the knack to simply flow in your spirit and head, heart, and hands this material and, and make, a, make a runway where you can get your, your bird off the ground, Lord Lord God. Spirit, come and inhabit our conversations, inhabit the, uh, the, the, the space that we meet in, move in our hearts and lives, move in our church. Help us to shift and make disciples. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you for your time. I really appreciate. I love you. I respect you. I thank God for you, and I'll see you down the way. Bye-bye.